Welcome to the Crow and Training Series from the Crow River Investment Club. I'd like to welcome you to this club. This session is going to cover the investment philosophy, some criteria for presenting and buying a stock, and some reasons why we would sell a stock. Let's start with the philosophy. We are growth investors. Our goal is to purchase good quality growth stocks at a reasonable price and hold them until the reason we purchased them no longer exists. It's really that simple. Let me break this down into some smaller pieces so it makes more sense. For growth, we mean sales and earnings growing faster than the market as a whole. Now there are a lot of benchmarks out there, but we use the S&P 500 simply because it's so popular. On this graph, you can see that from 1925 to 2003, the latest graph available, the stocks in the S&P 500 far outpaced government bonds and treasury bills and inflation. It grew at a compounded annual rate of 10.3%, which is why stocks are still such a good deal today. When we say good quality, we mean steady, predictable growth, and we do that with strong, articulate, and accountable management at the helm of the companies that we invest in. You see, we can't be in the boardroom, and we can't be there and available to uh, make sure that our own best interests are met. We have to rely on them. And there are a lot of companies out there that um, watch them very closely, and they take all the information that they gather from management and they put them into quality ratings and the rating companies that we prefer are value line and manifest investing now on value line um, each company has its own one-page report and in the bottom right hand corner you can find their quality metrics we like to look at um, companies financial strength ratings which um, are A plus all the way down to C we prefer B plus and greater we also look at earnings predictability, which goes up to 100. A company with 100% earnings predictability means that there's no volatility in the stock and it's continually growing, and that's what we like to see. These are historical numbers, or the information is based on historical numbers. On Manifest, everything is based on future numbers, or estimates. Now, on uh, Manifest Investing, we have the fundamental forecast that gives us a, a rough idea of where this company is going. In the bottom portion of it, we have the quality rating section. And quality, the quality rating is made up of four components, two of which are financial strength and earning stability, uh, some of which comes from value line. But the number that we're striving for is 65 or greater in the companies that we look for. This tells us that we have a well-managed company. There's another way to tell if a company is well-managed, and that's the graph on the front of our stock selection guides in your toolkit program. You can see here on the left that Walgreen is a perfect stock. It has sales, pre-tax profit, and earnings per share growing at a very straight, consistent, and upward trend. And let's contrast that with an ugly SSG, which would be Goodyear Tire. As you can see here, management has absolutely no control over this stock, and subsequently, not over the price either. Now when we talk about buying them at a reasonable price, we're talking about P.E. ratios. This is a very common term in investing. It's the price divided by earnings, P slash E. Now there's trailing earnings, which is the current price divided by the most recent four quarter earnings. Or there's forward earnings like we find on our dashboards and on Manifest, which is the current price times the estimated next four quarter earnings. Either way, we take, sometimes we take a look at both. We also look for an upside-downside ratio on the SSG, which measures our risk versus our reward. And I'll explain that in just a minute. On the back of the SSG, you can see that we have a couple of columns that give us the highest PE that people paid for a stock and the lowest PE they paid for the stock over a five-year period. We total these two up, and then when we average those, we get our signature PE or our five-year average PE. In this case, it's 28.7. What we do is we measure our current PE, which is 23.1 in this example, because what we are looking for is a current PE at or below the five-year average. Anything below tells us that people are currently paying less than they have in the past for this stock. Anything more tells us they're paying a lot more, and so we want to make sure that we're buying it at a good price. Also on the back of the SSG, we use the PEs to figure the lowest price that we think uh, people will pay in the next five years for the stock, 
and the highest price. And then we divide that into, into four quarters. We, the bottom 25% is where we're looking to buy our stocks. So when a price falls within that realm, we know we have a three to one better uh, opportunity of making money than losing money. And uh, these concepts will become more apparent as you learn toolkit. Now, when we present a stock, we have minimum criteria. And the reason why is because our meeting time is very precious and we don't want to waste time hearing about stocks that, that don't meet our philosophy. So we want a minimum of five years financial history. We want to know that the company's had a chance to fumble and make some mistakes and pick themselves back up. And this is our way of you know, finding out whether or not management's been able to hold muster for us. We like the straight upward lines on the SSG like we, like we saw with um, Walgreens. We also want stable and increasing profit margins. We look at pre-tax profit as a percentage of sales. It tells us whether or not the company's controlling costs. We also like to look at total debt. We don't want to see any more than 33% of debt coming from bank debt or from loans. We also would like to see it at, at least at uh, less than the industry average. So companies that have low debt, when they do run into trouble, and they do run into trouble, from time to time. We don't have to worry about them being mired down in interest payments on debt. We also want to look for a positive, um, an out positive outlook for future growth. We want to know that there are drivers that we can define that are going to propel this company in the future. Now, we want all these things available and present when we, when we present a stock. We also want them present when we buy a stock. But we add to that value criteria. P.E. ratio at or below the five-year average, an upside-downside ratio of three to one or better, and then we'd like to see the, the potential compounded rate of return at 14.9% or better because that's the rate it would have to grow in order for us to double our money every five years. Now, we have a buy and hold philosophy in this club, but it's not buy and forget. And so from time to time, we're going to need to sell a stock. There is no one or two criteria that would cause us to sell, but every situation is different. But for uh, failure to meet our original expectations, um, that might be something that uh, the company did, might be on our part. Maybe we just did not properly analyze this company and it didn't meet the expectations that we set. So sometimes it's better to get rid of a stock like that and find one that does meet our expectations. Declining profit margins would be a problem. Uh, the financial condition, a company taking on more debt would be an issue. Um, maybe it would be a company coming in and, and with a competing product that was better or that was better marketed and it's eating into the profits of our company. That usually happens when you have a company that's dependent on one single product. So we try to diversify. We can also sell a stock if we just simply lose confidence in the management. Maybe they promised something they didn't deliver or maybe they just did a bonehead move. And it could have nothing to do whatsoever with the stock. Maybe we just need to balance our portfolio or buy out a member. These would all be reasons to sell a stock. Hopefully, this will get, be the first foundation for getting you up and started. Next, we'll find out more about the Stock Selection Guide. Thank you.